And America yeah. is one of those places where, where we're supposed to welcome refugees, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, lift the lamp beside the golden door kind of thing, right? I've been really disappointed to see the rhetoric about immigrants here in the United States, but, um, you know, especially recently, because like, the reason we're so successful is everybody wants to come live here, and the, the most talented, smartest people come here and make the inventions that change the world. Valuing refugees is important. Um, you know, it's not just people fleeing. It's 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 opportunity. Um, it's yeah. opportunity for your nation. So I was really impressed when when my friend told me that Bangladesh, this this country that's barely scraping by, took in two and a half million refugees in two weeks. Never asked questions. Didn't try to keep them out. Mm. Didn't build fences or walls or borders. They let them in. What percentage of the, of the country's population is that? Bangladesh has 186 million people in the size of South Carolina. It's about what two percent ish. Yeah, two percent in a country that is it's three thousand people per square kilometer. Three thousand human beings per square, square kilometer. kilometer. Yeah. So it's already very populated. extremely populated, giant apartment blocks where they're all living on top of one another. So for them to take in two and a half million refugees without complaint or 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 hesitation was really, really impressive and touching to me. And I said, I want to go see this with my own eyes. Yeah. So I booked a flight. I ended up being the first American with boots on the ground in this crisis. And I realized very quickly when I got there that like I wasn't going to be able to help these people. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. I had a quarter million dollars left over, and there were two and a half million refugees. What am I going to do? Hand everybody a dime and say good luck? You know, like, yeah. like that's not going to work. If you're listening, you're probably thinking to yourself, what a monumentally egotistical thing to do to go over there and think that you could help. And it was. Yeah. It was. Um, but uh, I improvised. Right. I got there. I realized that I couldn't really directly help these people. So I decided that the best way for me to spend my money on them was to try to help the rest of the world understand what was happening there. Mm. Because at the time, there had been one news story on this, and it was published in the Daily Star, which has a circulation of basically Bangladesh, parts of India, and like Malaysia. There's barely international news yeah. that two and a half million people have fled Myanmar because they're being ethnically cleansed. Like the New York oh. Times didn't cover it. The Wall Street Journal didn't cover it. Like none of the big newspapers were, were covering it. So I hate the phrase raising awareness. I felt relegated. <laughs> To, to raising awareness. I was a little upset that I was doing this, yeah. um, but it seemed like the only thing that I could do to help. So we hired 18 people. Um, you know, uh, my, my friend and I um, hired one of Bangladesh's best directors who was currently engaged in something else, but I was able to, you know, pull him away from it. And we entered the world's largest refugee camp uh, with a bunch of cameras uh, in about a week to shoot what we could shoot. We also, uh, you know, crossed the border into Myanmar to get direct evidence of the killing. Once we realized, you know, once we had started interviewing the survivors, we understood that this was not just like a thing that had happened. It was a thing that was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so we figured we could probably get some direct footage of the killing happening or the, the burning happening. So we crossed the border. We got shot at a bunch um, <laughs> and had to run back across the border on foot and like pile into a bus while we were under small arms fire. One of our drones was actually shot down uh, with, with small arms fire. Was it an unmanned drone? Like it was an unmanned drone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It was just a, it was like a GoPro. I forget what the model was, but uh-huh. it's like it's a two foot long drone with like a quad rotors. Uh-huh. Um, I got a little greedy we we had some great shots of and, and this sounds really morbid to call it great shots of killing but i mean we were you know three four hundred feet in the air over a village that was being like actively burned down wow. and i got greedy with the shot thankfully we were streaming it back to the base but um mm-hmm. and so we did we were able to recover most of the footage but um but yeah they noticed it on station Mm -hmm. above the village that they were burning down and started shooting at it and and successfully Mm -hmm. shot it down with small arms fire. But um, anyways, we made this film. It's called Blossoms from Ash. It's available on DocuBay, uh, which is a subsidiary of Amazon. It won um, the World Fest International's Remy Award in Houston, where it got noticed by a distributor who purchased it and sold it to Amazon. So it's Mm -hmm. it's there now. Yeah, that was was how I ended up over there. That's how I ended up making the film. Um, I feel very lucky that I was able to find the crew that I was because I had no idea what the heck I was doing, man. 